Hi, I'm Francis from Apple Door Research, and I'm here following the panel discussion with Andy from Nokia. Andy, uh, there's a lot of talk about automation um, in uh, CSPs currently. Do you think automation is the is the possible CS, uh, CSP silver bullet um, for many of their operational challenges? Um, I think it is actually, and if it's not the silver bullet, I think we're probably in trouble as an industry collectively. Um, I mean. Automation is the only way that we're going to be able to cope with that complexity that we've been speaking about um, already. Um, you know, we've already kind of passed the tipping point where networks are just so complicated now that humans on their own can't operate them. Uh, so I think um, automation definitely is the, 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 uh, the key and it's the way that we're going to be able to drive down costs and increase our agility. But it's not as simple as just plugging in some software, switching it on and walking away. We need to do it in a, a thoughtful manner uh, and maybe in a stepwise manner as well. So we're not talking about big bang, it's about doing it in an incremental manner. And how do you see CSPs improving their operational efficiency? I guess in, most importantly, actually optimizing the use of the people that they have. Yeah, so I think if, if you look at um, efficiency, you probably need to look at it holistically. So it's looking at technology, it's looking at processes, it's looking at people. Uh, people are very often, you know, one of the larger components of, of the operating expenditure for, for, for the operator. Um, if not the biggest. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's about very simply making sure that you have the right people in the right places doing the right tasks and also making sure that automation and AI are augmenting or, or assisting those people. So if you've got um, engineers with 10 or 20 years worth of experience, you need to make sure that they are actually working on the, the value adding tasks rather than the routine repetitive um, actions. And that's really where automation can play a key role. Um, so simple alarm handling, uh, data build, those kinds of activities. If we can automate those processes, it's gonna free up those um, experienced engineers to work on more uh, value-adding activities, so maybe um, proactive maintenance, uh, maybe looking at um, you know the needs of enterprise and industry 4.0 customers, and applying some of this telco know-how to new 5G use cases. You mentioned AI. How do you see AI in operations sort of allowing the future evolution of, of uh, operations? Um, well, I think both of those are really critical to, to the future of operations. And I think you can't actually separate them. I mean, um, artificial intelligence is going to help you manage this complexity. It's going to bring insights and it's going to help simplify things. But on its own, um, it's not an awful lot of use. If we want to act in digital time and we want to have our operations flowing in digital time, we need automation to actually um, implement whatever actions are necessary in the network. So how, how do you see us leveraging some of these new technologies to, to reduce operational costs? Where, where, they, where are the costs that are possible to remove with these new technologies? Well, there's plenty of scope um, across CSP operations to reduce costs. Um, again, I think if you look at it holistically across the whole end-to-end -end life cycle, um, energy would be one example. Um, if you look at you know, the costs of running a, a, a network, could be half of the OPEX is um, related to energy costs. You have things like um, self-organizing networks where you can um, enable energy saving features and functionality. You can obviously modernize your energy supplies. Um, if you look at things like um, field maintenance, there's a lot of cost sending engineers out to a site. And if you can use um, artificial intelligence, you can actually optimize that so they're only going um, when it's necessary, or you can schedule those visits in a more efficient manner. What do you see as some of the barriers to CSPs being able to adopt AI and aut automation? And, and, what, and, and how do you think uh, we, and uh, Nokia in particular, can help overcome them? Um, I think there's probably two um, main barriers. I mean, it's people and it's data. Um, I mean, humans potentially are a barrier to, to anything uh, new from a technology perspective. I mean, that's the, the nature of, of, of humans. Sometimes we're resistant to change. And we can overcome that by making sure that um, we communicate effectively about the end goals of automation and, and AI, involving those people in the process right from the start um, when you're developing and designing um, and operationalizing a, yeah. a use case. Um, and also making sure that they have the, the right skills as well. I mean, I think that's a role of uh, employers. Um, and then from the, the data side, I think we need to um, realize that there's really no short 
circuit to this. There's no way that you can um, take a shortcut. I mean, you have to just accept that getting the data is going to take a substantial amount of time. And that's where it's essential as well to have um, a good mix of um, data science and telco domain expertise to understand um, what data sources are available, how to get that data, how to collect it, how to store it, and to make sure that you get the quality um, from the data. Because if you think of um, you know, a mobile network as an example with 10 million subscribers, you could have 100 billion data points every single day, um, hundreds of terabytes of data. What data do you actually want to use? Of course, it depends on, on, on the particular use case, but probably you're interested in um, anomalies, spikes, drops, um, where the system is crossing a particular threshold. It's not even 1% of that data. It's a fraction of that that you're interested in. Without that telco domain knowledge, it's very difficult to know where to get that data.